Welcome to episode five. So we're starting to chip away now. So this week's all about polyester. So spray filler, spray bog, we've heard it by all sorts of names. Make sure you watch the show right through because there's a lot of information about the data and how you should do it to make sure it's effective. And I hope you enjoy the show. Right, oh, so about to put some um, spray polyester onto the, some of these panels. Now, it's not a product I've used a lot of. We use it on the Mustang. We use it on Tailspin. Um, primarily, most of the jobs I do here, I use a high build primer. Um, and there is one of those available as well. This particular product is really good if you've had a lot of repairs um, and you're looking to get everything dead flat when you know you've got a little bit of variation. This particular car, because we've got uh, reproduction panels, they're not as straight as you might like sometimes. Um, Adam's done quite a bit of work on the door gaps. So there is a bit of filler work, um, a little bit more than I was planning. So we've decided to go with the polyester. So it's the A712 and it's quite unique. It comes in a one liter and it comes with a little hardener, a bit like if you're doing fiberglass work. Um, and that's because it is a polyester filler and we're gonna put that through the gun. Now, there's a few things about that. First of all, we need to seal everything off with the, the epoxy first. So we're using the DP616. So I've just been going through my data sheets and I do this every time when I do something, and especially this case, because I'm using something new, whereby I'm gonna mix that up. I'm gonna put two coats of the 616 on and within there, it tells me um, the flash off times and it's only five minutes between coats, but it's 25 minutes at 25 degrees before overcoating with polyester filler. So this is why it's important to check because if you don't let it flash off properly, it's not gonna breathe and then allow you to put the other product over the top. So that's the first thing. The second thing is um, the spray gun setup for the poly is actually two to 2.5. I'm gonna use it um, reasonably thin because I don't have a lot of build, I don't need a lot of build, and I'm gonna use a 1.8 gun. Now, you can always you know, have a little bit of variance, but it's ideal if you follow the sheet. And then once again, five to 10 minutes flash off between coats. Um, and when I read through the sheet, something else that I wanted to mention was, well, a couple of things. First of all, you cannot rub this wet because it is a filler, like a polyester filler. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is, um, when you read through the, all of the information, um, there's a little line right in the performance and limitations that says that this particular product's not part of the PPG Lifetime Paint Guarantee Program because of the vast variables associated with spray polyester. And that variable, and I've spoken to PPG about that, is the fact that people tend to overuse it. So they'll put three or four coats on, they'll have a few low spots, they'll put more on, and the build thickness gets way too much, and it's not designed to do that. You should be getting that work done with your filler work. So just bear in mind, if you go down this track, um, it is a good product, but you just need to be aware of its limitations in how much build you can put on. Like I say, I like to use a high build primer, but it means more work in the filler stage and probably one extra block and one extra coat of epoxy to be able to do that. And you'll see in a minute when I show you the panels that I've got those to a point now where I've put polyester over them, sorry, put epoxy over them, blocked them all back out, found any little things I wanted to fix. I've fixed those now and now we're gonna move forward. Now, someone asked the other day as a question, how do you work out how much paint to mix? I pretty much work on 80 to 100 mil of mixed product per face. So if I'm doing you know, a door and a guard, you've got to look and see how big they are, but around the 80 to 100 mil per coat. So if I'm going to do you know, a door with two coats, I'm going to mix between you know, 160 and 200 mil, depending on the size of the door. So the panels I've got there now, I've gone through and sort of gone two, four, six, eight, I probably need about 800 mil of the epoxy and then I'll work through the 712 and work out how much we need of that. So I'll finish up talking now and start doing some work. So it's quite a nice day today but I've still had the heater running and I've done that to get all of these panels up to temp. 
So as you can see, there was a few repairs. Um, this particular door, I probably would have been better off skimming the whole panel, but I chose not to do that. So I've got myself um, up to 24, and I've got all these panels. So I've masked off the back of them because I'm doing this polyester. I don't want a whole lot of build on the backs of things. And you'll see there where I've actually got um, urethane. So I'm using um, Sika as a, just as a, um, a sealant in all the backs of those. And the same there with that boot. I'll just spray a bit around the back edges of this poly. And then the guards are a little bit the same. So we tried to <clears throat> prep up as much as we can. And I'll start getting into it. Right, oh, that's a done deal. So I end up putting three coats on it. So I've mixed it at the, at, in the finest form. So you can mix it um, with five parts thinner up to 10 parts. So I've gone the 10 parts, so I can run it through a 1.8 gun. And I've done that because I was pretty happy with my lines and all. And what I'm liking now is just the way, when I look at it, how much it's laid down. So there's not a lot of peel in it is good. So that'll rub out pretty good. So I would imagine I'm probably going to you know, put some trace on that. We'll reassemble the car, put some trace on it and then um, go 120, 180 because then we've got to reprime. But it's brought the back of those up nice as well. So it just gives us a little bit of product to work with. As you can hear the floor's a bit sticky. So I ended up in total using um, 1.8 litres of mixed product to do the one, two, three, four, five panels and the backs. Righto, so we really want to break out now and, and talk about poly, John. So um, it's something we've used a couple of times on projects, so the bigger projects, so like my Mustang way back, that's a long time ago now. Yep. Um, and also we use it on tailspin. And I tend not to use it at, at home because I've got a little bit more time um, to do more work on the filler. But it's obviously a product that is very valuable. And I know I use it on the underside of the bonnet um, on Boss XC, for instance, yep. because I had a whole lot of changes and modifications and it's the filler works really hard to get how you want it, but you can put the spray poly on. Sure. 
just explain to us about, I guess, what makes the product up and the pros and cons and sort of how it works. Yeah, look, a lot of people will ask, should I or shouldn't I use spray polyester? There's no right or wrong answer. Uh, some of it will depend on, you know, if you spend more time finishing your body filler, and particularly if you're applying your body filler from the end to end of a panel like you do, and you haven't got lots of little um, steps from different layers of body filler, then you can, if you spend more time to get the body filler straighter and finish it finer, you can get away with high build primers. Right. So that's, you know, what John's saying, you've seen me on, on Boss XC where I just bogged the whole panel. Yeah. You know, with yeah. a thin, and nowadays people are splining that. Yeah, yeah. And then go with your splines or your big blocks, that if you get that and chop it right down, probably even to 240, yeah. there's really no need for poly because you've just, you've put your, your main filler on the same as if you're putting poly on, haven't yeah, you? Correct, yeah. So yeah. if you're gonna cut panels and stretch panels and shape panels and, yeah, you know, that, that's a car that starts to become a lot more costly and that's where you need one more go at it. So, you know, you've got different shapes and contours and now you're changing the, the shape and the structure of the vehicle, then spray polyester makes sense. So tailspin. So that's something like tailspin, right? Yeah, so where we've made the front guard out of eight bits of steel, yeah. you can do all the bog work you like in doing that, yeah. but by putting the spray poly on, you're getting that nice, even build. Yeah. So I know we talk microns in paint, but how thick is it? Is it a millimetre or is it...? Uh, a a millimetre a millimetre and microns are very different. So a millimetre is like a thousand microns. Okay, that's, so right. that's what I wanted. So, so, so if you get a new car that's come out of the showroom, yep. it's, it's these days between 70 and 100 microns. A hair off your head's about 100 so microns. Point one of a... It's, of it's, a mill? it's very minuscule, yep. right? So they are very thin layers. In custom, or in the custom world, a lot of the film build rules go out the window because you're trying to create something. You know, if you look at Tailspin on the turret, we had a brand new turret welded on. It didn't need spray polyester. No. So we didn't. So if you're looking at, for my head, what what it, what's the the brochure say in relation to spray poly in the, in the PPG range is maximum build film. So, so, so film builds. We we talk about you know we talk about three hundred microns as an upper limit. Right. So if we're in the smash repair, so that's world, once you're done. Yeah, we'd be saying look at three hundred. If if it's more than three hundred microns, you need to think about sanding it and removing some of the film build. Yep. <coughs> or paint stripping it. Okay. So I, know so I've done my bulb. Yeah. All right. And I've put my epoxy on, and now I've hit it with the the spray on filler. Yeah. All right. So the poly. What can I expect or what should I be looking to achieve? Am I going to get half a millimetre out of it? Am I going to get 500 microns out of the poly? Yeah, you, you'll And be get, safe? Or, or, or so, so again, with spray poly, um, where, where I see it go wrong is people try and put three, four, five coats on. And that's where the film builds can be up around five, six, up to 900 microns. Right. Which is, which is a lot. Way too much. Luckily, you sand a lot of it off. But if you put on two nice thin coats of spray polyester, um, those film builds will be le less than hundred, less than 200 microns before you sand it. So the point I would like to make here is people see me use a steel ruler, yeah. you know, or a bit of timber on the bodywork and go, look, I can see, you know, I'm going to fill that, I've only got half a mil, so I've got 500 microns. Yeah. If you're putting a steel ruler on, don't expect the poly to fill the gap. No. Because it's not designed to do it. It's designed to take out that shimmer not yeah. take out. So if you're someone that's terrible at body fill like me and you're putting in multiple layers, you start to create these waves you can't really feel by hand, but you can see through a primer. So the spray poly is good at, you know, leveling out the layers of body filler that you might be applying over a long period of time. Yep. And just giving you that nice flat surface for your primer to, to, to be more successful. Okay. So that's that's right. right. So so that hopefully gives you a bit of an idea on how much you can put on and it's not designed to put two coats on block it out i've got some lows put some more on block it out i've still got some lows block yeah. it out it's not going to last guys yeah that's the reality it's not yeah. it's not there it's not a cure-all yeah and, and spray spray poly is great for all your jams which are hard to get body filler in and nice all and the even. tight areas yeah. so while you're doing your, your so when you paint a panel and you apply it to the jam, you can see it when you stand back and somebody's 
painted that, you've got that nice flow and the poly, the spray poly helps, especially with those jams, to create nice flow. Okay, so one of the things that I think people need to understand is that with spray poly, it's like, it is filler, so it's porous. Yeah. So you definitely can't rub it wet. Yeah, definitely not. And definitely not. What, what's the other thing to look for that you're not doing wrong in relation to using spray poly? The, the other thing that you have to be very, very careful of is some people drown body fillers, spray polices in, in Prepsol, in wax and grease remover. That's quite a dangerous thing to do. Yep. Uh, because it's so porous, it will suck it all the way down to the lower substrate. If it's cold, you may then prime that and it's still wet at a level you can't see, so you'll get blistering right. coming through your primer into your top coat. Okay. So don't drown things with Prepsol. You know, it's a good idea to give the body fill a really light wipe with some thinner, yep. fast thinner, just to Terry pull out dust. Terry, you mentioned in the last episode about um, using like a yep. high quality thinner or yep. an acetone, I think yep. you said? Yeah, pull out the dust yep. out of the, out of the yep. Um Okay, so, um, Anything else we need to know about poly that, is, is, that you see that creates issues or a little trick of the trade? Yeah, that body filler or poly, you should always finish with minimum 180 if you're going to prime it. Right. You know, uh, high build primers won't fill 120 scratches. Yep. Or you'll have to prime twice, um, which is defeating the purpose, and you'll still get some movement. There's something I've picked up on here, and rightfully or wrongfully, whether I'm doing it 100% right, but and I just it was in episode three, whereby when I got my, my, my fillers finished, I put a bit of 180, bit of Galaxy 180 on the interface and just yeah. give it a quick run over to basically pull a bit of dust, but also take out some of those rough scratches in the epoxy and on yeah. the edges, because I'm gonna re-epoxy it anyhow, yeah. so that the machine just tends to take away some of that cross-cut coarseness yeah. of the filler. Yeah. Am I doing the right thing? Yeah, look, from, from all the work and testing we've done, we don't see any, any the 180 is not coarse enough to change the shape of something other than a style line. So you've got to be careful on yep. the style lines. But the work that we've done and what we see is you don't really change the, the, the ripple level yep. or the straightness of what you've just done because the body filler and the, or the spray poly is so hard. And I'm talking a, a whiz over, not a... Yeah, working yeah. at edge. Yeah. I'm talking about pad. just to clean yeah. with the inter with the five mil foam interface. Yeah. And I just found that the first side I did the other day was when I did that, it just came out really nice. Yeah. And uh, and I think it's to do with using machine. Yeah. And look, we recommend the next level, which is to put just a red scour on. Yep. Uh, Merlon pad and just vacuum all your dust out because a lot of people love to blow the dust all over their clean workshop. Yeah, and then away you go. Yeah, we actually covered that as well and then it's in the when rafters, we were doing, um, yeah. doing the filler side of it. Yeah, it's everywhere. All right, I'm gonna wrap that up on poly and we'll probably break it here and then have a look and see what else we can find to talk about. It's been a privilege to have worked for so many years with PPG. With their help over the last 25 years, we've been able to come up with some of the best paint in Australia. And I can say that from experience having worked on things like Tailspin and also Boss XC, working with these guys to actually come up with the sort of finish we need on some of the cars that you can see there. Whether that's with their help or on my own, we've achieved some unbelievable results with such a great product. Thank you, PPG. Righto, so the next stage. So obviously it's all been done in epoxy over the top of our filler. Now the roof, I ended up deciding to fill the whole roof because I wasn't comfortable how deep the marks were in it that were prior to me working on the car. So I've actually used normal filler on the whole roof and I've got that all sanded back now. So this area here that you've seen me before working on with the filler, I'm going to block that now. And what I'm using, um, if I can find it, is just some um, 180 in the Galaxy on the vacuum block and I'm pretty much running that over to find any lows. So I've put my black trace on, and as you've seen previously, they are a, a reproduction quarter panel, but I've put filler up through here. But you can see down here now where I'm just starting to show a bit of a low here and a couple through here that are in the pressing. So 
I'm not going to chase that too much more because I've got bare metal here and here and I've been rubbing that through that way and I'll do some more of that in a moment. But I just want to make sure I've got nothing else that I need to repair and I'm going to coat it again with epoxy before we go to the polyester. So I'm using this coat of epoxy to trace out to make sure I'm real close. So I'm going to go and turn the vacuum on and then I'll give this a rub and hopefully show you the process. Righto, here we go. So, so far so good, but you can just see here a little bit of trace. So that bit of trace there is the edge of my filler work. So I'm just going to give that a bit more. That's actually come out real nice. I can see a tiny bit there still, but very little. You can see there, this has got quite a lot of curvature and shape in it, and I'm using a flat block, so I'm just working my way down that flat but I can sense that it's just a tiny bit low there. No, not too bad. And then the other thing it'll show me down this line here, where my black line is, it's got a little tiny step in it there on that radius. So I always talk about my radiuses. It's important to have that radius really nice. Once again, I've got that curve, so I'm using the block and I'm pushing it up through that curve on the angle so that I don't put lines in it. But I just want to make sure that I've got it nice into that edge. Okay, so this made me look really good, but you can see here where I've still got epoxy and I'm starting to see filler. So that epoxy's filled up that little low, and that's the process that's going to happen now. We'll put the epoxy on it, then we'll put the polyester, and when we put that polyester on, the next time we rub, we've got a consistent, even product that we're going to rub over the whole car before we go to our primer and then our colour. When it comes time to do an edge like this, these blocks come with a, a curved one, so I'm just going to grab one of those and I'll show you and then run that along that line. So that's that block, got that nice curve on it. So for the sake of the video, I'll just do this quarter quickly. I would normally wait until I've got everything prepped and I do this as the final stage. But for the video, so I've just grabbed a new piece of 240. I've got that 10 mil interface soft foam pad on there. And I'm just gonna use this to take out some of those scratches um, and really just reinforce in my mind. I've got it nice and smooth and ready to go for the next coats. I'm 
got to change the vacuum out. So that's probably a good example. You can see the amount of dust that there would all be going around the workshop without a vacuum. And I hadn't changed the hose from the handheld over to the machine. So it came on, but it wasn't connected. So now I'll start again. So I've got that vacuum turned right down at the moment because it's really loud on the, on the camera. So you can see a little bit of dust still hanging there, but when it's on the full correct vacuum, um, you virtually get nothing at all. I've shown in one of the other episodes using Prepsol to do your Prepsol shine to check. Now I'm just showing you how I could see this was a bit low with the trace coat. And this is all steel, there's no filler, so I'm comfortable to put the Prepsol over because if it had filler, you don't want to be loading it up with Prepsol. But I'll just put a bit of Prepsol on there and we'll let that sit for a second and then Louise can come down but you'll see that little imperfection there that will actually come out in this next stage with the polyester. And you can see just here where it's very slight but it's there so if you were blocking that out with primer or even a high build primer it might not want to come out whereas doing it with the poly that will definitely come out and there was a little bit of something here i mean it's very close but that's why you go that next stage to try and get everything as straight as you can get it well that's something else close now so i've just got it in here mastered up for a car that wasn't meant to have much filler in it. it's got a bit going on so i ended up doing the whole roof you can see all the different bits and pieces. I've urethaned up all the, um, the joins everywhere. So then I'll put three coats of the polyester on it. So that'll get us up with all the other panels. I'll only have the front bits and pieces to do. So getting closer. I'm back in the booth again now, so the bonnet, I've opted to do the underside of that while I'm doing some work on these. So we've, we've cleaned that up and there was a few little repairs that we had to do where we cut and shut some edges. But because it's a new panel, I'm just gonna prime that. So it's already got a good coat of epoxy on it. So while I'm priming that, I'm gonna do these. So these have got the poly, um, they had three coats of poly um, applied to them and Darren rubbed those up in the last couple of days and we've done a couple of little repairs to get them how we want and the fact we've masked this off so there was no poly on here so the epoxy's all done so I'm going to now re-epoxy those three the back of those three and put the primer on so they can then go back on the car that way I can do all of the polyester rubbing on the outside so I'm going to get those done this afternoon and then I've just got the last nose cone panels up here that I've got to do the poly on those. So I'm just gonna get the epoxy on those while I'm doing the backs of the doors. And then when I've got all of those in primer, I'll get some polyester on these. So that'll take me a couple of hours and we'll get that out of the way.
I nearly forgot to come back and take some pictures of the, the finished product. So this is the poly. Um, it's obviously out of the booth now. And I've already started doing some work down low. I'm not going to talk about that because that's for the next episode. But what I like about this product and a lot of these primers at this stage, you can actually use the light that you've got in your workshop. Um, and we use all these LED fluoros. You can see he, here how that's got that nice curve. But here it looks to be a bit sharp. Now I don't have any, I don't believe I've got any filler behind there. So what I'm going to do now is I've got nothing here and that transition, I'm going to try and improve that transition so that it looks really consistent and smooth. So there's enough product to do that. Back here you can see I've been messing around with the rear which will be in the next episode but you can see there just how much orange peel there is in the product and you can sort of hear that. So I've been sanding that with some 240 in the Galaxy and what I will show you in the next episode how we go from this sort of line and we chop up and down to it to create the body line that we want because we need that body line to go through from panel to panel. And John mentioned earlier in the show about inside the jam. So you can see how nice that's come up. So we did do a little bit of work in there, um, not a lot. And I can still see down here, there's some marks from the pressing and it was never our intent to get rid of those because, well, it's not what we're doing. It's a, it's a street car respray, not a full on show car. So if it was a show car, I'd be filling those completely and rubbing it out and doing the whole thing. So loving the way it's looking. Um, and in the next episode, we'll show you how to take that to the next stage to go through the primer. Righto, so that pretty much rounds out this episode. So I'm really hoping you, everybody that's watching and following is getting all the information they need. Um, if not, um, ask the questions because I'll answer the question firstly and possibly even add it into the next episode if I've missed something or I'm not covering something fully. This really is designed to be an educational type series. So I'm trying to put in all that information and give you as much feedback as I can about it. If you're really enjoying what you're watching, share it with your friends and your mates um, and give us a like. And if you haven't subscribed, do that as well. So we'll get this one put to bed. The next one we'll reassemble the car, get all of that um, blocked out and show you how we're going to do that. And then we can start heading towards some primers.